how do you feel ahead of Iowa State? Really good. You know, we uh, it's a tough team coming in. They they put up a good fight each time they come into Norman, but uh, we got a great game plan and uh, we feel confident as an O line and as a unit and as an offense. So going into the game feeling pretty good. How do you guys get the run game going? More consistent. You know, it's not it's not about um, being physical or guys wanting to have the run game. It's just about being uh, dialed into the details. We just we got to hat people up correctly. We got to we got to block things correctly, and we'll be fine. The run game will. We'll lock in for you guys. When you guys talk about running the ball and where to improve, what are some of those elements that you're talking about in the meeting room and, and wanting to improve on each week? It, it's just all details. Like I said, it has nothing to do with us being physical or us wanting to go out there and put a beating on somebody. It's all about what people are thinking pre-snap and who people are reading. and We just got to go to the right guys. That's the number one thing. Andrew, you're Oklahoma born and bred. You understand, as well as anybody, how big the OU Texas rivalry is. But my question is, how difficult is the week before OU Texas not to get caught up in the trap of looking past an opponent at your biggest rival? Right. You know, I mean, I think Coach Venable does a great job with the, with us and with the team with that. We uh, we have a huge focus on just going one and zero each week. We don't we don't look ahead. We uh, everything this week is about Iowa State. I haven't even thought about Texas, so you brought it up just now. So, but no, everything is about going one and zero each week. And the the biggest game of the year is the next game. So. It's Iowa State right now. What makes Iowa State's defense so unique or difficult or difficult to, to move the ball against? Well, Iowa State's got that unique 3 3 5 defense. They got the three safeties. Um, I'll bring the bandit in there. So uh, we just got an extra fitter in the run game. We're going to have to have our, our slots um, pad up the bandit in the run game, and that's about it. Up front, we should be able to handle them well. We just got to block. How do you battle that? Is it, is it motion, deception? Uh, width on the field? Is it kind of everything, a little bit of everything? Yeah, we've got, I mean, yeah. I actually, I don't really know how we're blocking the bandit. I right now, I have to look into that. I know, I know a lot of that's not with us, so. What stands out to you, to you about the way that uh, Troy Everett has handled his situation, obviously practicing a lot of center and then playing a guard in the last couple of games? Yeah, you know, I mean, I think he's handled it perfectly. Like you said, he doesn't, he hasn't gotten many of those left guard reps yet. He's out there on game day playing it, but um, yeah, I love Troy. Troy's got a motor. Troy loves to play ball. Troy loves to get his hat on people. Um, he's just an all-around good football player that he's fun to play next to. Talk to we talked yeah. about the fact that playing center helps him understand the other positions next to him, that guard spot. As a center yourself, what does he know that maybe a normal guard wouldn't play in that role? Uh, I mean, like you said, being a center, we got to know all five positions. So, I mean, him moving to left guard isn't that hard of a transition for him because he, he could play right guard, he could play left tackle, he could play right tackle. We, as centers, we know who, what, what all five people are doing. It seemed like a guy yesterday. He asked a lot of questions. Did that catch you off guard at first? Who? Troy. Asked he, he, yeah, he said that he leans on you guys. He's willing to ask a lot of questions about where he needs to be. No, I, I love that. I, I'd rather a guy be oversure than undersure. So, I mean, him asking questions just lets me know how serious he is about and how good he wants to be. Is there much to that transition of, of spending part of the week snapping the ball, playing center behind you, and, and then moving into guard on Saturday? Or is it more seamless than we've been? Um, you know, there's got to be a little bit to it because, I mean, you're switching your feet up a little bit, but O-line's O-line in my, in my total opinion. So I think he's a good, he's an athlete. Athletes can play ball. Fred mentioned you guys are going to be getting Savion back. So how big is that going to be for that unit? Uh, I mean, having, having Bird back is big time. A big, strong guy, got hands, and loves to run through people. So we'd love to have Bird back. Thanks, Appreciate it, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it, Andrew. Thank Appreciate you, man. Sir. Appreciate you. Do you have to game? What would you think of the performance side? Um, Cincinnati. Versus Cincinnati. I mean, you know, I think we played a pretty good game. They had uh, their D line was it's a top tier D line right there. But I mean, the boys were coming off the ball. We we struggled with our details as an offensive line unit, and that's just our biggest thing right now is we we just got to get down with the details, make sure we're having things up correctly. I heard on a podcast earlier this week, and I think it's one you would respect that you know, going to break down Gabe and Teddy. Yeah. Gabe said he thought you had your best career game, the best game of your career against Cincinnati. Really? How did you feel about that? Because of the challenge of the crossroad, it's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I felt pretty good after the game. I, w I watched the film, 
didn't feel as good, but you know, I could, like you said, uh, Dante, the Dante Colion dude I was going against, he's a great player, he's a cool guy, but uh, we just gotta get better each week. That's all, that's my main focus, staying healthy, getting better each week. Making, making sure all me and the boys are good. Appreciate you. Yes, sir, appreciate you.